All right, guys, welcome back to another tying video for Florida. Today we're going to be tying a snook slider. First thing we're going to do is throw our hook in the vise, take our thread, we're going to start it right behind the eye of the hook, and we're going to work our way all the way back to the point and the barb of the hook. Take our scissors, trim that tag piece off, and we're going to come in here, grab some craft fur. You could grab a pretty healthy clump of craft fur. Don't worry about using too much. Once we get it in our fingers, we're going to taper that out. So I'm going to cut that piece off, pinch the bases, and just pull a little bit of under fur out at first. I'm going to switch hands, and all we're going to do is pull out those long fibers, letting it slip through our other hand, and stacking it right alongside the next fiber. Just trying to get it a little bit shorter and fatter, and really utilizing all that craft fur. And then I'm going to come in here and pinch out the butt, and just take that under fur out. Once I got that, and I got the right kind of shape and amount that I want, this fly is going to be on the shorter side, probably around three and a half or so, maybe four inches total length. So this tail is probably going to be around two and a half or so. Take that, make sure we pinch really tight between our pointer and thumb, keeping it on the top side of the shank of the hook. And we're going to take a couple wraps, four, five, six, seven wraps, and secure that down really tight. I'm going to take this leftover butt section, I'm going to lift up and kind of chop that down at an angle. It's going to give us a pretty steep little ramp that we can kind of tie off at. And we're going to take our thread and we're going to leave it right in front of that ramp. That gives us a really good tie-in point to kind of smooth it out with some crystal flash. I grabbed a little bit too much here. All I want is three strands. So I'm just going to take these and set these aside. So I got my three strands of crystal flash. Put it around the thread. I'm going to make a V shape and then pull up and pull it right alongside the shank of the hook. So now I have six strands going out the back, three on both sides. I like to trim those just a little bit shorter than the full length of the tail. And then I like to trim them all different lengths just to give it a little bit more depth along the tail. I don't like putting too much flash, it kind of blends in once you run your fingers around it. Next up, we got our collar, which is going to be, this is our first collar actually, it's gonna be a foxy brush. I'm gonna take my wire, pull a little bit of material off so you expose some of that wire, if you used it already. I'm gonna to try to get that wire length right the same size as that really thick bump that we made with our crafter to tie that in. I'm gonna tie that in right in front of it and then go down that ramp I'm going to move it right to the smooth part of the shank of the hook. I'm going to take my fingers, comb everything back on that foxy brush. The first two wraps that you make on this foxy brush, it's really important to make those wraps really far back. You want that fiber as far back as it could go where you tied in that craft fur. So the first two wraps nice and tight, really pulling it back. And then as you go forward, maybe just two or three more looser wraps. So I did three on this one, pretty loose wraps. So you're not stacking the wire up right next to each other. You're kind of leaving a little bit of room just to cover everything up. These brushes are extremely durable. They don't really let anything touch the inside thread to really break your fly. So all I did there was pulled up and I captured this brush. And then I did two wraps over and then pull everything back and do a few wraps in front. You can come in here and trim this out. I don't particularly love to do that. It does leave a big burr, so I like to pull down on my thread and just pull on this wire and wiggle it, wiggle it a couple times, and it does break. I mean, it does take a second longer. It doesn't dull your scissors, and it gives you a cleaner tying point, so there's a lot of benefits of doing it that way. Pull everything back and really clean up those wraps. I'm going to move my thread to in between this gap between the foxy brush tie off and the eye of the hook. I'm going to come in here with my comb. I'm going to comb out that foxy brush because once we have that deer hair tied on, it's going to be really hard to get to that foxy brush again. So comb that out really, really well. You could use your bob, uh, bodkin and pick that out, a uh, dubbing pick or something along those lines. I like to use a comb. All right. We got our thread in between the foxy brush and the eye of the hook. We're going to take our mono eyes. These are rectangular eyes, so make sure you tie them with the flatter side 
to the shank of the hook. It doesn't really make a huge difference, but the small intricate details definitely make flies look prettier. It gives it a smaller profile head. So just going to make a few X wraps and parachute wraps. You don't have to go too crazy, but definitely secure those eyes where they're not going to spin or break or pull off. And now for the last few steps, our deer hair. Don't let it scare you. It's really not that hard to work with. So we're going to take our first little clump of deer hair. Pretty healthy little bit. I'd like to say it is... I'm going to cut that off from the hide. Kind of hard to tell you how much that is. It's probably... Probably three quarters of the thickness of a number two pencil pulled tight. So you can put this in a hair stacker. So basically the tips go in, smash this down, and then you separate this tube and all the fibers are there, nice and stacked even. On this fly particularly, I don't really like to do that. I like the natural bushiness of the all different length fibers. So I'm gonna take my hand, lay it where I want it, which is just shy of that foxy brush. I'm gonna take my other hand, hold that where I want it, and do two or three nice tight wraps, capture wraps, and then really cinch down on it. And then I'm gonna go ahead and invert that fly again. And we're actually gonna repeat the same exact process. I'm gonna cut off a healthy clump. This is gonna be pretty much half the thickness of a pencil on the bottom side. We're gonna use that deer hair to help flip the fly, not flip the fly, but keep the hook point riding down. This fly is supposed to track straight. If you put too much material on the bottom of this fly, it wants to spin the fly and you don't want that. So a little bit less material than you do on the top side. I'm actually gonna pull a little bit more out. So just about the thickness of half a pencil when you're pulled tight. And if you do have any under fur in here, just go ahead and pull that out. It's really easy to get rid of that stuff onto your hair. I'm gonna lay it over right where I align my tips with the other bunch, hold it in my offed hand, do one or two nice tight captures, and then I'm just gonna let this kinda almost spin but not really spin. And as I do two or three tight capture wraps, after I got those capture wraps, I'm gonna start snaking my thread through this deer hair all the way to in front of the eyes. You, the whole goal is not to capture any of the deer hair with these wraps. So when you end up moving that thread in front of the eyes, you want all of that deer hair behind your thread. So that's the goal right there. Once we got that, just pinch and pull back, really get that deer ha hair out of the way, leaning backwards. It's just gonna help aid in the next step of the deer hair clumps. So I'm gonna repeat the exact same steps that I did just in front of the eyes now. So I'm gonna take another clump of deer hair. This is gonna be a smaller clump, probably even smaller than the underside clump. So a little bit less than half of a pencil thickness. I'm gonna come in here and I'm actually gonna cut the tips off just so it's a little bit easier to work with. So all I have is a small little clump of deer hair. I'm gonna stack that right on the top side of the shank of the hook, hold it with my off hand, making sure to keep it right on the top side of the shank of the hook, two little capture wraps, and then you could really start to cinch down and get that deer hair exactly where you want it to. I'm gonna put three wraps and then I'm gonna invert the fly. If you do two wraps and invert the fly, it's like one and a half wraps and it's not tight enough to hold. I put two and a half and then when you invert, it does half a back wrap if you guys are following. So. I'm going to repeat the same exact step on the bottom, trim out a little clump of deer hair. I'm going to do the same exact thing. Cut the tips off, lay it right where we want to tie in, hold it with my off hand, do two nice capture wraps, and really pull down and flare that stuff out. Awesome. Once I got that, we can come in here with our fingers, and we're just going to kind of manipulate that deer hair and we're gonna push everything nice, tight, and compress it backwards. I'm not really worried about the wrap so much right now, I'm just trying to lay everything backwards. Once I got that, I can start working my thread back up, and as I work my thread back up, this goes for the whole fly when you're working with the deer hair, 
you want to pull that deer hair out of the way, making sure not to capture any of it on your wraps. All right, once we got our thread moved in front of all that deer hair, this is going to be a little bit tricky part. We're going to whip finish around this deer hair. I see a lot of people using different methods to whip finish around this. Personally, I just use my fingers. If you want to use something like a pen or a tapered tube to do a whip finish, great, go for it. All I do is whip finish by hand, so I try to make my whip finish, and as I whip finish, I try to get all that material pulled back out of the way, not to capture any of it, which on that time I actually did, which is totally okay. I just kind of move that out of the way now. And then I'm gonna restart. So try to sweep everything back. You're not gonna really be able to see because I'm really getting that control of the material with my fingers. I'm blocking that whole front of the shank of the hook with my fingers. I'm just sweeping everything back. And then I'm whip finishing really tight. I like to put a couple whip finishes here. I don't really care if I have it pretty close to the eye of the hook. When you whip finish with this tooth end, you can pull really hard. So don't be afraid to really tug on it. If you break your thread here, it's not the end of the world. Just restart it. Try not to move too much and you'll pretty much be able to tie off the fly again, no problem. You could kind of see that was a little bit tricky. I didn't really capture any of the material. I maybe got one little piece in there. If you want to switch to a different method to whip finish, you totally can. To me, it's just much faster to do it this way. So this fly is looking pretty horrendous right now. This little razor is going to change everything. This is just a double-sided razor cut in half. So I'm going to make a half a circle. I'm going to come in from the front of the hook, and I'm just going to kind of push up and sweep up. And as I sweep up, I'm just rotating this fly just a little bit as I go. This is the first initial pass just to see what I'm kind of working with. So I'm just going around, going around. I could start to see it really take shape. So I'm just going to stop and clear that material off to really see what I have left. Cool. So it's looking pretty cylindrical. If I invert, not invert, but if I tilt the razor up this way and push this way, it's going to give me a nicer head. If I push straight in, I risk cutting this nice fluffy deer hair collar with the tips. So I don't want to push too far back, but I definitely want to angle up to make sure we get those big fluffier ones. So these guys right here, see how these tips, not the tips, sorry, the butts of that deer hair, the big dip belly part, we want to get those out of there. So you can kind of prop them up with your finger a little bit and then just trim them back. You don't have to go too crazy trimming this fly. I really like to come in and sweep up as much as possible. It kind of takes a little bit of experience just to get used to it, but once you do, you can trim this fly relatively fast. So I'm just going to make it semi-perfect for you guys. So I'm going to take my time, make it look nice, make sure we get a nice trim on this. Awesome. All right. Looking pretty good. That's going to be pretty much the done fly. You could go as crazy as you want trimming this fly. I would also suggest sometimes even bringing scissors with you on the boat. If you want to trim this fly while you're out there, say you want to fish it really shallow, keep the fly pretty fluffy. And then if you have to, for some reason on the boat, trim the head a little bit, let it sink a little bit more. That's going to be pretty much the done profile of the fly. This is a great little backcountry snook fly. Great for tarpon rolling around. It's tied in the SL12S short 1.0, so very durable hook. Don't be afraid to add a weed guard to this fly if you want to throw it super tight to the mangroves. Redfish will totally eat this thing. I do suggest for redfish that you tie the head a little bit bigger, just so it keeps this fly up off the grass a little bit. Especially if you have schools of redfish, say in Louisiana or something like that, this fly is going to be absolutely deadly. But it's just an awesome little snook sweeper. I throw it quite a bit. I really like this pattern. Give it a shot. If you have any questions, feel free to call the shop, message the shop. We're here to help you guys. As always, we offer free shipping anywhere in the U.S., and we hope to see you guys out on the water.